Hi, my name is Janeta Kucharova and I am senior UX researcher at Kiwi.com. Today, I am going to tell you how to make your research findings actionable using Figma. My name, Janeta, starts with a special letter Z. This letter is the last one in the alphabet and when your name starts with Z, you just need to get used to be the last one in all the lists. I am from the con country called Slovakia. We have amazing mountains called High Tatras. Currently, I live and work in Czech Republic. I could describe myself from three perspectives. I'm a UX researcher at Kiwi.com and my background is in computer science, which I studied, design and marketing. I am also a photographer. I really love taking self-portraits, especially when I can combine photography with fashion and traveling. I post all those photos on my Instagram. I am also a yoga lover. As a researcher, I really need to keep my mind clean and sharp. So yoga always makes me feel like a new person. All right, that's about me. And now let me introduce you Kiwi.com, the company where I work as a senior UX researcher. Kiwi.com is online travel agency which sells tickets of airlines which usually don't cooperate together. I am part of UX team which includes designers, researchers, content designers and localization. I also would like to give you a little bit of context how research works at Kiwi.com. Currently, only UX researchers conduct uh, research. Every researcher is focused on specific product domain. We conduct different types of research, but for the sake of this talk, I will focus on usability studies only. As we were conducting usability studies, we were facing a challenge. Our research findings were not included in product development enough. We conducted a lot of research, we had a bunch of insights, but they weren't kind of used. Our stakeholders weren't coming back to reports after we presented them, but it wasn't that they wouldn't want to, but findings were rather somehow distant. It was also hard to prioritize usability problems and therefore address them. At that point, our typical research report um, was quite text heavy. We always presented our reports to our stakeholders and sometimes we even tried different formats of report. You know, like slide decks, Slack messages and so on. But even though we tried all those things, the findings were still distant. So we asked ourselves a question. Why aren't our research findings actionable? Is it our communication? We decided to have a look at the communication from two perspectives. How do we communicate research findings and where do we communicate them? Let's start with how. As a researchers, we were communicating via written text, blocks of text, verbal communication, but then our main stakeholders for usability studies, designers, were more visual. It was like speaking two different languages, language of report and language of hands-on work. Currently, a lot of teams are democratizing research. So not only researchers are conducting research, but also designers and different roles. That means even more different communication styles and languages, so it can get even harder to report findings effectively. So at this point, we knew that we really need to simplify our reports to kind of divide them into smaller parts and make them more digestible. I was thinking about it a lot, talking to many people, and my friend Biela, great UX researcher, gave me an idea. 
when I want to simplify or structure my ideas in real life, I always use post-its. Post-its are great. Everybody knows them. And you can't really write a block of text on a post-it, so it really forces you to prioritize and just write there what is the most important thing. You can also have as many post-its as you want, so you don't feel like committing to the idea. It rather f supports you with the ideation. This is really great, for example, for designers when they are exploring solutions in design iterations. You can also have different colors of the post-its, which is like an extra layer of information you don't need to write. This is great for prioritization. So using post-its, you can just simply divide long reports by writing one finding or a quote on one post-it. Now, we knew post-its are the way how to communicate research findings. Now we can have a look at where to communicate them. This is a simplified version of Kiwi.com design process. This is a discovery phase which is happening before the development and before the product is developed. In this phase, we need to understand the space define the problem, ideate about the solutions, and conceptualize them. This is also when we are conducting usability studies and where the design iterations are happening. All of this is before the designs are implemented. This is really important because at this point you have higher chance that your research findings are going to be included in the design iteration. So, when we wanted to have research findings included, we knew that we needed to bring them where all of this is happening and where designers spend majority of their time, to Figma. Figma is the most used design tool in Kiwi.com. Also, what is important to mention that all our features have separate Figma file and those Figma files are used by designers, product managers, developers, content designers. All of them use the same file for that particular feature. Sometimes even teams like legal and marketing join discussions in those Figma files. This is really important as stakeholders already know where to find those Figma files and how to access them. What is also good to mention is that all those Figma files have standardized structure. So this really helps with orientation in the file and everybody knows what to expect and where to find it. This is really great. So we decided that our where will be Figma. All right, now it's time to connect our how with where. Post it with Figma. So we can actually place those post-its with findings to Figma files. Let me show you how. All right, right now we are looking at the recording of usability testing. We ask participants to go through our product and just mention if there is something strange happening. Participants mention that they don't know what to expect after clicking on book button. Right now we are in Figma and this is the prototype we just tested. At this point, I would just duplicate page like this. And this is our duplicated page with exactly the same prototype which we tested. You can always add a bit of information. At this point, I added the link to research plan, name of the study, research questions, date, and which researchers are conducting the study. 
you can also add the task. We also see the post-its, the very important part of Figma report. We actually have a design system called, called Orbit, which cont contains UI kits. From there, I was just like easily drag the post-it and change the color however I want. You can also easily write there and yeah, it's just pretty simple. Green post-its mark everything what worked. Yellow, what needs improvement, orange, what didn't work, and lila is for recommendations. Remember the finding about the book button? So I would just take an orange post-it because this is really important. That book button is the main flow to conversion. So we really just need to make sure everything is clear there. I would just describe easily and clearly what is happening there. I would mark participant. This was participant four, so it's P4. You can also add the clip. And what is cool, you can actually copy the link of the post-it and just share it wherever you need to. All right, now when I zoom out, you can already see that there are already some findings from the previous recordings and you just see where are all important things happening. If you need, you can also create short executive summary, but this really depends on the way how you work. All right, after I would analyze all the recordings, I would or present the findings to our stakeholders or you can just simply tag your main stakeholders uh, directly in the post-it. So I would, in this case, I tagged product managers, designers, and I just described like shortly what's going, uh, going on there and what we could try. You can also just, as I mentioned, you can also just like report it. It's really up to you the way how you work. I would also attack our content designer, who is really important in this particular case. And now imagine that all this book button thing really happened at Kiwi.com. So after we actually analyzed these things, we conducted a couple of A-B tests. So right now, when you go to Kiwi.com, you see the button select instead of button book. And I can tell you that just changing this small thing really increased uh, the conversion rate. And that was thanks to small usability finding. All right. Why is this approach powerful? As you could see in the demo, you really need to have a design. So it's really great for usability testings, heuristic evaluations, expert reviews, and so on. On the other hand, it's not so great for findings regarding the interaction or the whole flows, journeys. Why should you care about this approach? This can actually increase collaboration based on your research findings, as it's incredibly easy to discuss possible solutions in the comments. Right now, we find stakeholders discussing in our reports all the time. It can also increase empathy. Our content designer, Lucia, mentioned that it's like having travelers with us in the room. This is exactly what my job as UX researcher is about, to bring people together. You can also easily standardize this approach. So every researcher, anybody conducting research will report in the same way. This can help you to keep the bar of research really high. All right, I will also tell you how to start in two simple steps so you can start right away. Step number one, start small and build it together. I will tell you how we did it at kiwi.com and maybe it can help you to find your way. When we started, we piloted it with one or two designers. We gathered the feedback and iterated on it. After, I presented it to the whole UX research team, gathered the feedback, and after that, I presented it to the whole team, 
whole UX, UX team on bi-weekly show. This really helped with adoption across all the domains. The last step was several walkthrough sessions with our stakeholders, so we would show them the new structure. So yeah, start small and iterate step by step. The key thing is to get people involved and build it together. This way, everybody will be happy about the outcome because they were included since the beginning. Step two, create your own post-its. No worries, if you don't feel like that, after the talk, I will share the UI kit in Figma community and share the link on my socials. Also try to find when and where are the design iterations happening in your company. So you find the best time and place to bring in the research findings. For us, the same Figma file works great. All right, now to sum it up. Bringing research findings to Figma will make them more actionable. Your research findings will be closer to your stakeholders. Your research findings will be easy to iterate on. Your research findings will help you to increase the empathy towards your users. Remember this slide? This is us before. Researchers and designers using different languages. And this is us now. Now we speak the same language. And you can too. Thank you. My name is Janeta Kucharova, and feel free to reach out to me with any questions on Twitter, Instagram, or LinkedIn, and I really can't wait for all those discussions with you.